Now a shooting board is a must have in every workshop. It lets you square things up, remove machine marks from the table saw or the band saw and it also allows you to very precisely size parts. For example for drawer fronts or box parts. I've built this very basic shooting board a couple years ago and I've used it quite a lot. Now for an upcoming project I will make extensive use of the shooting board and it's the time to make a new and fancy shooting board. There are a couple of features that I would like to have it and let's have a closer look so you know what we're talking about here. A shooting board holds a board like this, here's the stop and then with a plane on its side you can now make a cut on the end grain precisely 90 degree here. Just like that. This is a basic shooting board and has four parts. The base, another piece of ply glue to it so the plane can register against. Then we have a stop here that is precisely 90 degrees and at the end there's a hook so it won't slide over the bench. Now this stop here is just a piece of pine screwed to the board with two screws and there are a couple of issues with that. Now first of all it's pine so it's very soft and coming apart and also two screws, especially countersunk screws, are not the best option. At the moment it's exactly 90 degrees so it's fine. But once this gets out of square there's not really a way to adjust it. So in my new shooting board I want to have a way of adjusting it so a little bit of a wiggle room here to adjust it to 90 degrees back again. Also I will make it out of hardwood. The stop also has another function. By providing a zero clearance here, it prevents tear out. As you can see here, this is pretty worn out and it's not exactly zero clearance anymore. In the new shooting board, I want to have a sacrificial piece here that I can move over once it gets worn out and it still provides that zero clearance here. Another feature that I want to incorporate into my new shooting board is another stop here that angles at 45 degrees. This way I can shoot miters here and really get them to a precise fit each and every time. Now the plane runs on this part of the shooting board. In my new shooting board I want to have something that's called a ramp shooting board. So the plane will run at an angle or along a ramp so I have a shearing cut. A shearing cut is basically that the blade is not hitting the board straight on but at a slight angle and this way the cut is at a constant shearing motion. This makes a better cut, a smoother cut and distributes the wear on the blade evenly along the blade and I don't only cut with one part of the blade. Most ramped shooting boards I could find on the internet had the workpiece at an angle just like that. Somehow I don't like it and I want to have my plane on the ramp. By having the ramp facing downwards I also have more power in my cut and I hope this will make the cut easier. To reduce the friction between the plane and the shooting board here I've applied some paste wax. From time to time I have to apply new paste wax. In my new shooting board I use something that is called a low friction composite material. This is very slippery especially for metal and it just makes the plane slide very smoothly. This will also make the cut easier and hopefully won't tire my arm as quickly. All right, now let's build the new shooting board. For the base material, I have a piece of Baltic birch ply. It's 18 millimeters. It's a leftover from another project. And also for the stop, I will use hardwood as I said. More specifically, I have this piece of oak left and that's gonna be the stop as well as the zero clearance thing. Time to make some sawdust now.
All parts are cut to size now and it's time to assemble them. I will simply use wood screws and this countersink drill bit to make the pilot hole. So far so good. The base is assembled, now I turn it around and attach the cleat to the bottom. Nice. A few things left. Now, first of all, let's make a nice stop and as I said, I want the stop to be a little bit adjustable. Now here are the stops, the 90 degree stop and this will be the 45 degree stop. So this is a 6 millimeter rod and I will make the holes 8 millimeters so I can adjust it here and there. I will first make the holes into the stop and then transfer the hole locations down to the base and drill the holes for the threaded inserts. With the oversized hole, I now here have the wiggle room to adjust it whenever it gets knocked out of place. For the zero clearance here, I found these nice walnut strips in my scrap bin and I will use them. Now a screw and a threaded insert in the stop block will do the trick. I will need oval holes here so I can readjust the zero clearance insert here. I will make the oval holes over at my router table. It's my brand new router table I've just finished. I will have a video up soon. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you won't miss that video. It's a pretty cool router table with a few nice features and also very sturdy and nice DIY fans. So stay tuned, subscribe so you won't miss that. Now to transfer the whole location to the stop block, I will now set it approximately flush here and then with a 6mm drill bit make a mark. Now since I will only adjust it in this way, it's smarter to place the screw more to the right than to the left because then we have more room to adjust it later on. With the threaded inserts in place, I can now attach the zero clearance plate. Great. I've cut the low friction sheet on the table saw. It worked fine, it was a bit scary. I don't know why, I just don't like to cut other stuff on my table saw than wood. But now I will attach it here to the ramp with a couple of screws and then we can give it a test run. <laughs> this is so smooth. <laughs> Lovely, nice and grand shavings. This shooting board still has a few things that could be improved. It's pretty big, it's heavy and there are little things that can be smarter. So I went ahead, fixed them in digital space and 
made another one. This time with the precision of the CNC. And I designed CNC joinery so no screw heads will be visible. I glued it up, gave it a sanding as well as chamfering all the edges and applied a coat of hard wax oil to it. This shooting board is now available in my store and I ship it worldwide. There's also a mirrored version for left-handers. Let's have a look at the improved features of this shooting board. The most obvious change is the size. This final version is a little bit smaller because that was just too bulky. Now this fits perfectly and there's still room if you have a bigger plane. The 90 degree as well as the 45 degree stop, they both have the walnut zero clearance insert that you can adjust and make it zero clearance all the way. Ah, oh, that works so nice. Since the 45 degree stop will not be on the shooting board all the time, I made a nice storage solution at the side where you can simply screw it there and it holds it in place. To adjust the zero clearance inserts you need a 6mm hex key. I stored it here with a magnet and it has a nice little mechanism. You just push down on it, it pops out, you can take it out, adjust the stops and then when you're done put it back. Okay, one more time. Ah, so smooth. Enough talking, let's see it in action. Now the very first thing you do with a new shooting board is take your square, put it up against the fence and then adjust it to exactly match that 90 degrees. And then you put your zero clearance a little bit proud so you can trim it flush until it gets a true zero clearance like that. Okay, let's trim back the zero clearance here. We have this piece of walnut here and it needs a little bit cleanup work here. And I can now do it very easily here. Dead on square and no tear out. Pretty nice. As you might know, getting a miter joint perfect is pretty hard. Now, as you can see here, the miter joint is perfect on one side, but on the other side, it's not. I've cut it by hand and now let's use the shooting board to trim it to a perfect fit. I've set the 45 degree stop perfectly here just like with the 90 degree stop and now we can flush up our miter joints. And now let's check the fit on both sides. Okay, the first side. Oh, that's perfect. And the other side. Nice. If you're interested in one of the shooting boards, you can pick it up on my website. It's a real beast with over five kilos, so 11 pounds. It is super rock solid. I chose only high quality materials and components like the 80 millimeter birch plywood, the low friction palm sheet here on the side, as well as the solid oak and walnut for the stop and zero clearance insert. Thanks for watching. Since you made it to the very end of this video, I assume you like what you see. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and you won't miss more woodworking content like the router table build. See you in the next one.